Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We have a big update on vRealize operations for you. I am Peter Hagenson. Uh, I'm a senior product marketing manager here at VMware. Hey, and I'm Matt Bradford. I'm a staff technical marketing architect at VMware focused on vRealize operations. Thanks for joining us today. Awesome. Well, let's, uh, let's take a quick look at our agenda for the day. Um, we'll be taking a quick look at uh, what's coming up in vRealize Operations and vRealize Operations Cloud, as well as an update on vRealize True Visibility Suite. And then uh, we'll let Matt get into, into the tool and uh, show us all of the new exciting stuff in a, in a demo. So we're gonna start out by looking at some of the use cases for you to understand how operations management can help you on your journey to operations zen, as I like to call it. Uh, this management platform is built to support your operations journey wherever you are on that adventure. Uh, we can lead you to end-to-end -to -end visibility from the application to the infrastructure. Uh, and really with the rest of the vRealize suite, we can help with self-service automated deployment and security tools uh, like SaltStack and Cloud Health uh, Secure State. So to look at a, at a bit more detail, let's visualize what it means to have consistent operations for a consistent infrastructure. We're starting out with whatever cloud you may choose, whether that be private, public, VMware cloud, and even the edge. And what vRealize Operations and vRealize Operations Cloud starts out with is collecting those metrics, events, configuration data, and logs. Then once that data has been collected, we can look at our application topology and dependency mapping and feed that data into the AI and machine learning engine to really learn and enhance your environment based on your business and operational intents. Uh, and when you build in the four pillars of the platform, um, being you know, performance optimization, capacity and cost optimization, uh, configuration compliance and intelligent remediation, um, you're going to ultimately minimize your unplanned downtime, uh, cut your troubleshooting time in half, reduce software licensing costs, and really improve your overall efficiency. So now let's take a quick look at what's driving the analytics platform behind vRealize operations. With all of this data coming from all of these clouds and infrastructure, uh, vRealize Operations can take this raw data and make sense of it uh, for you and for your business. For example, predictive forecasting can tell you when you need to purchase new hardware, and the troubleshooting workbench can help you find your root cause faster with relationship where analysis of your applications and relevant infrastructure. Uh, plus, you have the capability to have lights out operations with the action framework for complete self-healing and optimization. So really to boil it all down, vRealize Operations is the top choice for IT operations management because of these four reasons. First, you can trust the market leading self-driving operations management platform for their most demanding applications. Uh, for three consecutive years, IDC ranks VMware as the leading vendor in the market share for both cloud systems management and data center automation. Secondly, we know that you prefer native instrumentation. So designed by the same engineering teams, which work together seamlessly with vSphere, VMware Cloud on AWS, and vSAN. Third, self-driving operations management is connected to deep data and market-leading automation. So IT staff can drive hands-off and hassle-free with confidence that performance and costs are optimized accurately and according to business intent. And then lastly, I always like to talk about the not if, but when problems arise, you need to fix them at the speed of light using the intelligent analytics run on a rich set of structured and unstructured data, which allows you to see the connections to your broader ecosystems of application and, and infrastructure. And as you hopefully know by now, you can align your operations model to your cloud model with vRealize Operations Cloud. 
So with VROPS Cloud, you're going to, first off, reduce your time to market to accelerate innovation and product delivery by deploying capabilities faster, gaining widespread adoption, and automatic updates uh, providing the latest features to users. You're also going to be able to improve your op operational agility uh, so you can focus on other strategic priorities that support the goals of your organization by shifting the burden of maintenance, upgrades, and avail availability responsibilities from IT staff to the cloud provider, which is us. Uh, we also give you in increased flexibility to quickly adapt your business to changing market conditions by easily experimenting or trying a new product uh, or project with minimal risk. Uh, so, and then lastly, you can scale rapidly at the same pace as, you, as your company growth to keep up uh, with your customer demands by scaling your IT environment on demand dynamically and reliably. So with that, Matt, let's take a, a look at what's new in Realize Operations 8.6. Yeah. Well, some of the key themes that we have in this release are, first of all, you know, just faster time to value. We've made navigation um, a lot smoother within the product. We have a new UI, which I'm going to show you in just a couple of minutes here. Um, that'll help you kind of, you know, really work your way through the product a little bit easier. Um, we also have on vRealize Operations Cloud, we have in-product guides. And what these will do is take you step-by-step -step through the product and performing uh, things like deploying cloud proxies, uh, you know, connecting vRealize Operations Cloud to your vCenters, creating dashboards, creating alerts, right? All these things to really get you off the ground as quickly as possible. Now, the other areas that we have focused on are with the VMware Cloud. Um, Azure VMware Solution and the Google uh, Cloud uh, Vert VMware Engine, excuse me, is, uh, uh, you know, these are first class citizens in vRealize Operations 8.6 and vRealize Operations Cloud. Um, so these are all built right within the product. Um, and then we also have support for a lot more public cloud services. So uh, for Google uh, Compute, we've got uh, you know more out of the box content for more of those services, a lot of great stuff coming with um, AWS as well as Azure. And a couple of areas that I'm really excited about are uh, for one, the new business applications. Uh, so this is just kind of a new way to build out applications within the product. Um, something that you know you, you'll certainly learn more about uh, once we get closer to release and once the product is released, um, as well as support for the open source Telegraph agent. And I will show you this in the demonstration. Um, so we have support for this on premises as well as vRealize Operations Cloud, which we've had for some time. So really big release for us. A lot of key things that um, you know we're bringing a lot of new features into this release. I'm really excited to talk to you all about it. Awesome, and another exciting announcement we have is around the vRealize True Visibility Suite. Uh, so we're making some pretty significant changes to our pricing and packaging with the suite. Um, the main thing being that we will be including uh, all compute and storage management packs in every edition of vRealize Operations. So uh, previously, many of these management packs were included in TVS standard. Um, we've taken all of the storage packs, put them all together, uh, and we're going to bundle those in uh, with vRealize operations. Um, the other thing that we're excited to announce is our true visibility modules. So previously, uh, your only option was to buy a suite of management packs. But if you wanted to just monitor your Oracle database or just monitor your ServiceNow environment, um, we're now giving you the ability to choose those modules uh, and customize it to your environment. So more details on that coming up soon with the, with the next release of, of vRealize True Visibility Suite. And with that, let's, uh, let's get into the demo with Matt. Let's do that, shall we? So this is vRealize Operations 8.6. Peter, do you notice anything different with this one? Matt, is that a new UI? I'm glad you asked. Yes, it is, Peter. Yeah, so what we're looking at here is an early build of vRealize Operations 8.6. So things may change 
once the product is released. I just want to make sure I call that out here. Um, but you know, we're going to do just kind of a quick walkthrough of some of the new features within here. And yes, absolutely. The UI is definitely the first thing that we notice here, right? Um, we've done a lot to, again, really streamline the navigation of eRealize operations in 8.6. And so what we've done is this whole menu that used to be across the top, right, with the dashboards and alerts and administration. Well, there are some redundant uh, things up there, right? Like administration, right? That's available in both the left-hand menu and the overhead menu and everything. So it really made sense. Why don't we just streamline things and really focus in on just having one navigation menu within the product and that's what we got over here on the left hand side obviously you notice already you know those of you that are using realize realize operations have already noticed a couple of uh, differences within here um, I want to just kind of call out you know the quick start page is largely untouched with the exception of a new sustainability um, you know category here under the uh, managed configuration now what we've been hearing from a lot of customers is you know just wanting to be a little bit more optimized both you know in saving costs but also reducing carbon footprint right virtualization is this great thing that allows us to run many workloads on the same piece of physical hardware so we're really you know condensing down what you know how many workloads we can run on that same piece of hardware so kind of reducing waste. And that's what we're looking at here in these sustainability dashboards. So you know, V-Realize Operations is really good at that sort of optimizing your workloads, right? We can look at uh, wasted resources. We can rebalance resources with workload balancing uh, within the product. And so these dashboards are focused on things like, for example, small clusters here. <clears throat> Do we have you know, small clusters are less efficient than larger clusters. And for example, what I mean is with something like high availability, right, where we want to, you know, maintain enough spare resources for a single host failure, or maybe a single host going into maintenance mode for updates, right? We want to store that capacity and we want to set that aside. We'll picture that with a smaller cluster, let's say a two host cluster, just for simplicity here. Well, you know, if we're saving enough resources for one host failure, well, that's half of the cluster right there that we cannot touch because, well, that's sort of, you know, waiting on, on warm standby versus, you know, if it was a much larger cluster, well, obviously that percentage uh, decreases. So, you know, this really kind of calls out things like that. Or if we have any aging hardware, right, um, hardware that's not quite as efficient as maybe modern hardware with more cores and more memory, and we're able to run much more workloads in a very similar, you know, kind of power footprint, if you will. Other things that we can look at are, uh, you know, waste, right? Are we are we burning up electrons and kilowatts for, you know, just to be able to run idle virtual machines, virtual machines that are really sitting there doing absolutely nothing, or, you know, wasting storage on things like snapshots. So, you know, all of this is kind of consolidated into the sustainability, uh, you know, category here within vRealize operations. So definitely want to call that out. Definitely check that out um, as we, uh, you know, once we release vRealize operations 8.6. Who doesn't love now, being green, it, Matt? Uh, you know, it's not easy being green and we're here to help with that. So, you know, uh, down the left hand side here, let's kind of take a look at some of the options that we've got. And, you know, first of all, data sources. So this is where we go for all of our, uh, you know, what we're you know, cloud accounts and other accounts and uh, management packs, right? What we've done is we've consolidated all of that. So instead of having cloud accounts and other accounts, and we've got to remember, okay, well, my vCenter is a cloud account, but Kubernetes is another account. Well, we've consolidated that all into a single view in here. So, you know, I've got my vCenter, I've got my VMware cloud, I've got my public cloud, I've got my Kubernetes, Dynatrace. Okay, well, we also have APM integration in vRealize Operations 8.6 on-premises. Uh, that is coming. So all of these are within this same view here for uh, for easy management. But wait, there's more. If I go and if I start selecting a whole bunch of these here, I can actually go ahead and I can export these accounts. Okay, this is really useful 
for say, you know, migrating to vRealize Operations Cloud, or maybe I'm looking to deploy another vRealize Operations instance elsewhere, or maybe I just want to store these to just have a backup of my configuration of vRealize Operations. We can do that. And by exporting these accounts, I'll get a, a zip file that I can then import into another uh, vRealize Operations or vRealize Operations Cloud instance. And all of my cloud accounts, all of my integrations, everything will be imported. Now, this also does include things like credentials. And I just want to call out that the credentials are encrypted and they are um, you know, decrypted with a password that we set here when we do this export. So that's kind of a cool new thing. And of course, under the repository, this is where we still go for our management packs, right? Any of the native management packs um, or uh, you know, any of the, uh, the other management packs I can activate, you know, say ping here. I can still add management packs through the pack files. So very easy, um, all just located under the data sources integration or data sources category right within here. Now let's take a look at dashboards. What do you think about that, Peter? Dashboards are my favorite. <laughs> Mine too. And speaking of favorites, one of the cool new features that we have are, well, favorites. So any dashboards that you know, say I'm using regularly or frequently, I can add these to my uh, list of favorites and I can get easy access to these. They're just available right you know, up top, uh, up top here. Now we've also got kind of some new um, you know, organization to our dashboards. So I can go and I can take a look at my, say I wanna look at the performance of my virtual machines. Well, I can go in and I can access that dashboard this way and check this out. I can even add that to my favorites. Um, I could look at, uh, for favorites, I can go ahead and um, I can also click the star right up here in the top right corner, and that's now a favorite as well. So that's kind of a cool new, uh, cool new feature just for easy access uh, you know, for your dashboards. Um, let's move on to the administration uh, tab down here because we've really cleaned things up a lot. So administration used to have administration, configuration, so used to have all of your cloud accounts and everything. Well, administration is now just focused on things related to vRealize operations. So things like our role-based access control, um, you know, our global settings here. So if I go into global settings, right, I can do a lot of changes to vRealize operations. I can even go ahead and another sneak preview for you, add tag-based costing metrics and tag-based pricing metrics within uh, the global settings in here. So administration's been cleaned up a lot. Now, a lot of things are um, still under configure. So policies, applications, all of those cost settings are uh, under configure. Um, but before I move on here, I do want to show another thing that we're uh, building out here, and that is content management. So again, for customers who are looking to migrate to vRealize Operations Cloud, for example, we can take all of that great content, all of your dashboards and everything, and export those to a file. I can also do the same for things like um, you know, outbound settings, for example. So we recently introduced uh, custom templates for uh, REST notifications, right? If I create those, I can now export those uh, through here and then I can re-import them into another instance of vRealize operations. Or again, I can kind of sit on this and store it for safekeeping as just sort of another option as far as backups go. Now, going into the applications here, uh, of course, vRealize operations has the uh, you know, uh, native uh, uh, telegraph agent through the uh, application remote collector. And we can collect from, you know, 20 to 30 uh, applications as well as Windows and Linux OSs. So nothing has changed here. We still have all of these great, um, uh, you know, applications and, and OSs that we can monitor. But I want to show you the open source telegraph agent that we now support in vRealize Operations 8.6 on premises. And if I look at one of my virtual machines here, so this AppWin01 virtual machine. Okay, this virtual machine has the open source Telegraph agent installed on it. So if I go into the metrics here, we can actually see, and this looks very similar to a virtual machine that maybe has the vRealize Operations Telegraph agent installed um, because I've got the virtual machine here, I've got the Windows OS, right? So we're collecting these OS metrics through the open source Telegraph 
uh, agent. And I can go in here and I can look at things like my CPU, my memory. Um, I can even look at my disk here too. So uh, my C volume, for example, hey, how much free space do I have? Well, okay, cool. I'm actually getting this you know, directly from the OS. Uh, and I've got 78% free, cool, no problem with this virtual machine, loads of space. I can go a little bit deeper too and look at uh, the application that's installed on here, which happens to be MongoDB. Again, through the open source telegraph agent, which is connected to MongoDB, it's collecting uh, all those metrics from that application. And I can go in and I can look at, you know, all of those for this application. Now, one thing to point out, and one of the key, you know, reasons why we're doing this integration with the open source telegraph agent is because there are more than 200 input plugins available for this okay so this takes our library of uh you know 20 to 30 applications all the way up to um you know a lot more than that i mean again 200 input plugins there uh we could really extend what vRealize operations can collect uh you know for our applications now, one thing I did kind of hint at before too, while we're on the topic of applications, is integration with uh, APM tools. So Dynatrace, Datadog, New Relic, and AppDynamic. Okay, we can pull those in to vRealize operations on-prem. These were available in vRealize operations cloud, as was the open source telegraph agent. Now these are all coming on-prem. One last thing I want to show you is the um, we'll go into under configuration here in alerts. Now I talked about the rest notification plugin templates, right? Where we can take all of these metrics and we can kind of build out our own rest notifications for, uh, ticketing systems or for integration with chat programs or, or really anything that has a rest API, we can send data to that. One thing that has been asked for a lot is email templates. Okay. I want to customize my email alerts coming from vRealize operations. Check this out. You can do it in this release. So we're working on this new uh, payload template for email. And what I can do is I can add additional metrics and properties for this host, or for in this case, this virtual machine, uh, for any of its parents or ancestors, I can bring this data in and I can put that into that email notification. So in this case, I'm actually pulling the host name of this virtual machine. And if I go into the next step here, this is where we can actually format the email. So in this case, hey, an object named, and then the variable for the name of the virtual machine has got an alert. And you know, this is where we can kind of pull in that, that host name. By the way, this is on host name VMware guest name, host name, all of this sort of stuff. And, you know, bringing our, our uh, variables in is quite simple. They're all listed here on the right hand side. I just copy paste and I can format the email however I want to get the alert information the way that I want to get it. So this was all really, really cool. Uh, hopefully this was, you know, just enough to whet your appetite for vRealize Operations 8.6 and get you excited about this release because we can't wait to bring this to you. Matt, thanks so much for bringing us through that demo. Uh, as you said, I hope everybody is so excited for 8.6. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, and with that, uh, again, thank you and have a great day. Thanks, everybody.